Hi, do you remember Probes the Monkey from the Batterizer videos? Well, let's say that you wanted to use Probes the Monkey for a test where you actually wanted to count the number of times that he clapped like this. And he usually uses symbols, but you know, these are actually pretty loud and well, you don't want that uh, yapping on for hours and hours. So I've removed these little uh, symbols here. I've uh, screwed in some uh, crimped wires into here so that when they make contact, Bingo! Uh, we close the circuit and we can count the number of times that probes the monkey actually claps. Here we go. Go probes! Yeah! So you might think this is a pretty easy thing to do, just have a circuit that counts the number of times that uh, these contacts close like this. So you might think if you've got a frequency or a universal counter in your lab, a universal counter is not just a frequency counter, it's universal. It counts stuff. So you could actually hook up to your uh, frequency counter like this and put it into uh, what's called uh, totalize mode like this, which actually just counts up the number of uh, times that the input uh, goes through the threshold. In this case, I've got a power from a couple of AA batteries, just got a pull up resistor here. So every time that this shorts out, it shorts out to ground and it should count the number of pulses. But let's actually uh, try it, shall we? Hmm, let's just manually do it for starters. Oh. Oops, 225. Oops. You no doubt familiar with this problem, it's contact bounce. When these uh, contacts close like this, you don't just get one edge, you get multiple edges. And we can actually have a look at that if we actually hook our scope up here to our input. Let's have a squeeze, shall we? And put in single shot capture mode. You'll notice it was high there. And let's just capture, boom. One little pulse like that. Look at that. We've actually got not just one, not just the one nice, we do have actually one nice pulse there, but after that, look at all the crap that we've got there. There's lots of stuff happening with the contacts here, the screws, the surface, uh, you know, corrosion on the screws and all sorts of uh, weird and wonderful stuff. Look at that. I mean, that's why we're getting hundreds of pulses counted at any one time on our frequency counter here. So we have to debounce those contacts. So if we've got our switch like this with our typical uh, pull-up resistor, we're gonna get contact bounce or switch bounce on those contacts. Pretty much doesn't matter what switch it is. Any mechanical switch, be it a, you know, a proper mechanical one that you actually buy, um, a push button or toggle or whatever, or it probes the monkey here. Well, how do we actually debounce this? Well, one of the obvious and common uh, ways to do it is to add a capacitor across the switch. And that's exactly what I've done here. I've added a 330 microfarad uh, capacitor on there. I think I've got a 5K6 pull up on there. Let's give it a try now. All right, here you go, probes. Let's count. Oops, we're already screwed. We've got two here, it counted two instead of one. And, but look at our waveform now. We now have a beautiful classic exponential uh, capacitor rise like this classic RC time constant you're familiar with. And check out that uh, edge that we've got there. It is beautiful, look at that. There's no contact bounce in there whatsoever because now that we've got the capacitor across the switch, when you uh, activate the switch the very first instant, that that switch uh, goes low, then it shorts out the capacitor and then, then the capacitor will remain a short circuit and only charge up uh, based on the resistor value and the capacitor value, that classic RC time constant like we get like that. So that is why we only get the one switch transition in there, which is absolutely beautiful. But why on earth did we get a count of two on here? We got a counter two on here because our universal counter here is not a Schmidt trigger input. I've done a whole video on Schmidt triggers, so click here if you want to see that uh, Schmidt trigger video that explains everything in detail. This counter is not designed to debounce inputs. But as I pointed out in my Schmidt trigger video and demonstrated, uh, th when you've got a slow rising input signal like that into any sort of uh, digital logic input, which this counter effectively um, is really ultimately, then it can cause multiple uh, transitions due to noise 
on that signal. But I think what we might have here is a PEBCAC. A problem exists between keyboard and chair, i.e. me. I haven't set up this universal counter properly, and I don't think I've uh, shown setting up a universal counter before. Let's take a look at it. Now, you might be able to just see under there that there's a 100 kilohertz filter. I've got that uh, switched on, so it's a low pass filter. Filters out any noise above 100 uh, kilohertz. But, you know, uh, we could have some higher frequency noise on here for the uh, threshold and uh, stuff like that. So that could still be an issue. But let's take a look at the shutter, uh, the setup, shall we? You'll notice that there's an AC-DC mode here. Uh, DC LED is not on, so we're actually in AC mode. So we're AC coupling our input. So our input here, is being uh, AC coupled. We don't know what the value is and all that sort of stuff, so we don't want that. What we want is DC mode like this, okay? And then let's go and have a look at our trigger. Okay, our auto trigger's off. That'll just uh, reset the thing. I might demo that uh, later. But look, our threshold is set at zero volts. So now we're in DC mode. We definitely don't want our threshold at zero volts because that'll be right down the bottom here. And you might see that there's actually a tiny, you know, there's some noise down there. So if our threshold was zero, that's not going to work. Actually, let's let's try that and see what we get, shall we? So let's uh, go back into our run mode. And no, nah, it's actually not even working at all. So yeah, we get absolutely nothing there. So let's go back in and set our threshold. What we want is DC mode, our level. Let's say we want it to trigger at say one volt. This is 500 millivolts per division. Say so like right in the middle of that on the positive going edge, you can set it on the negative going edge. Yeah, it doesn't matter. In fact, in this case, you probably would want the negative going edge because you want the, the count to occur exactly when the uh, switch contacts uh, come together. So let's go in and we'll set that up to one volt. There we go. And positive, it's currently set to positive edge. We'll change that. We'll have negative edge. Thank you very much. What else have we got? Sensitivity high, low, medium. I can't remember off the top of my head what that actually does. It could be some sort of window. I, hey, I'll have to read the manual on that. So um, RTFM. Anyway, let's leave it to high, shall we? So we're all hunky-dory, ready to go. Let's try that again. Come on, probes. Here we go. Let's try it. Oh, oh, cheated. Hang on. There we go. We're running and it should instantly count this split second that we uh, touch these together. Boom. One and it's counted up one. Beautiful. So now we're working. Let's do it again. Two, three. Oh, no. See? See? There's our second problem. If we try and do this too quickly, it's not charging up to that one volt. So obviously, you know, we have to choose our capacitor value correctly. So if you had uh, something, uh, it depends on your object that you're having. So if you've got an RC uh, debounce circuit, you really need to know the uh, how fast your input's occurring, all that sort of stuff. So if you've got a fairly controlled device like Probes the Monkey, you know how often he's going to clap and stuff like that. And you can then tweak your capacitor value to do that. But obviously, He's not going to count things that are so quick that that capacitor can't recharge. Okay, so let's uh, try and capture this on the scope. Let's just do, look, we can see that. Whoa, like that. All these multiple pulses here didn't count because we didn't get to our one volt threshold that we set up on here. So, yeah, it's possible to uh, use our universal counter, tweak the capacitor value, tweak our trigger sensitivity, all that sort of stuff for our uh, MUT, our monkey under test here, good old probes the monkey, and, uh, you know, get sort of the output that we actually want from this thing. So let's turn him on and see what we get. There we go. So we only get him to count once per, um, you know, uh, like cycle, so to speak. So he doesn't count those individual pulses there. So that's actually pretty good. You could say that, you know, it depends on what you counted. Did you want to actually count uh, individual contacts or did you want to count uh, cycles of probes the monkey? So cycles, not too bad. Oh, no, there we go. What happened there? Whoa, you see that jump up? I think we've got problem number three. You'll notice that when probes is chirping, 
like this, the count can actually go up. <laughs> this is caused by, look, look at that. <laughs> the contacts aren't even closing. We've got our big antenna wires here picking up, uh, coupling from, well, probes, the monkey is causing some counts to go up. So we're picking up just crap even though he's not doing anything. So we have a uh, noise pickup issue in our system. You know, just testing something like Probes the Monkey, there's a lot of tweaking and messing around involved in getting something like this working. So we certainly have a problem there with uh, probes, just the movement of his uh, head action and his chirping uh, causes noise pickup in the wires and we can solve that. That's not something that I want to solve today, but just be aware that that's a problem that we encountered in this particular uh, test setup and that might need its own solution, shielded cables, whatever. Um, but there's another potential problem that I want to discuss. We're probably not going to see it uh, here today. It might be hard to demo, but um, have a look at This is your traditional RC debounce circuit, the switch directly across the capacitor. Now, when you short out the switch, of course, you short out the, when you press the switch, you short out the capacitor. And then when you release the switch, the capacitor slowly starts to charge up until it reaches your supply voltage up here. And we've got a 330 microfarad cap on there. It's a fairly sizable cap. It's going to store, a, you know, a reasonable amount of energy in there. So if we let it charge all the way back up to, say, our three volts from our two AA batteries here, and then we short it out again, we're generating a large short circuit current through that switch there. And that could also cause uh, interference problems similar to what we're seeing here because a very fast high current discharge like this generates lots of EMI, lots of, lots of electromagnetic interference, lots of a big loop current in here uh, with the switch and everything else through these wire, through these very long uh, wires that we've got here. Massive loop area, and that could upset your measurements as well. And, you know, I, I'd have to go to some effort to design something to actually show you that working. So, um, to you know, this RC circuit, your traditional one, you know, works reasonably well, but it does have that problem of generating potentially a large current, especially if you're using a large value cap in here. So you're better off, of course, using a much larger value pull-up resistor and a smaller value capacitor to avoid that problem, but just be aware of that. So to solve that problem, you can put an additional series resistor in here between the switch and the cap so that when you press the switch, you don't directly short out the capacitor. Instead, you're discharging it through R2. And R2 is, you know, generally going to be a smaller value than R1. So you want it to discharge fairly quickly. Once again, depends on your monkey under test and what you're actually and what the timings are of you you know to choose that capacitor value correctly specifically for your particular setup you'd also have to choose R2 uh, to get exactly the right conditions as well and I won't go through all the particular calculations of RC time constants and things like that because this is not a really an in-depth switch debounce uh, tutorial but suffice it to say that can solve any potential issue with shorting out a large value of capacitance here. But of course you might have noticed that now R2 is in series with R1 for your charging circuit and when you're driving a uh, Schmidt trigger, depending on the threshold uh, levels, the upper and lower threshold levels for the Schmidt trigger, it might cause issues with the values you choose and everything else. So another common technique to avoid that is to put a diode in parallel with uh, R2 here, it's got to be in that orientation, so it effectively bypasses R2 when you're charging up, but it uh, reverse biases and does nothing when you're discharging like this. So it can just charge up faster and, and basically almost takes R2 out of the equation there in terms of uh, charging. So you might have to do something like that. But as you can see, there's a lot of, you know, little things that uh, can go wrong with just a simple RC debounce, a lot of things to consider depending on your test setup, your monkey under test, your MUT, and it really does require, you know, a little bit of thought. I mean, you don't have to go through the charge equations for the capacitor and everything else. You can just sort of, you know, do a uh, basic back of the envelope calculation, rules of thumb, or just even trial and error. Oh, the 330 microfarad doesn't work. It's, uh, I think it's a bit high. It's not it's detecting multiple uh, things. Oh, lower it to 220 or 100 mic, or, you know, you 
you might increase your uh, pull up resistor value or something like that. Just, you know, experimentation can get the job done, but so can uh, calculation as long as you know uh, the variables and the threshold levels you're setting up and all that sort of stuff. So there you go, that's just uh, setting up a universal counter like this to uh, measure something like probes the monkey. But we still have that issue with that uh, noise. Hmm. And if you actually have a look at the uh, waveform, you can see it's quite noisy while probes the monkey's actually uh, operating. There's a fair bit of superimposed noise from the motor, whereas if I stop, if I stop probes and do that manually, you can see it's much, much cleaner. So yeah, <laughs> probes is generating a fair bit of noise there. And you could really come a gutter on that if you uh, hadn't uh, filtered your input or something else. So there you go, that's certainly worth watching out for. When you're testing monkeys like this, they're pesky little things, let me tell you. So through a combination of uh, settings now, I seem to have got a system that counts reasonably well. It counts, you'll notice that it counts up on the, because uh, I've got 1.5 volt threshold voltage uh, set and I've got medium uh, sensitivity on there so, and positive uh, rising edge. I've got the 100 kilohertz filter on. So it's only counting uh, cycles when he actually goes through that one cycle like that. That's if that's what you wanted. If you wanted to count the actual uh, clicks here, adjust the uh, RC time constants to do whatever. But yeah, it's kind of tricky business. Now, of course, there's another way to do this. Obviously, if uh, this input was going into a Schmidt trigger, of course, you've got to have it going into a Schmidt trigger and then going into a microcontroller. The microcontroller, as I pointed out in my previous video, might have uh, a Schmidt trigger uh, input. In fact, a lot of them uh, do, but just double check the data sheet that it does. And you can do software debouncing. You can, you know, adjust, effectively do a similar thing to what you'd use in the capacitor of the RC time constant for, and you can add little software delays in there, eh, 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 tweak the uh, values in your software uh, delay loop to do software debouncing. And you could do that on a micro. And another way to do it might be a uh, resettable one-shot uh, timer, for example. You can get 7.4 series or 4,000 series CMOS logic to do that. And so for multiple inputs uh, like this, it would uh, just generate a single nice one pulse out, then it would uh, reset the uh, timer. So you could do it that way. You could build up a little hardware uh, circuit if you didn't want to do uh, software debouncing. But, you know, uh, and if RC didn't, didn't do the job you wanted, I didn't, you know, it entirely depends upon what you're actually using to uh, count your number of monkeys. But of course, we were getting a pretty noisy waveform on this due to the motor in uh, probes here. So I can just hook up a uh, filter in there to clean up that signal. I've got my uh, Stanford Research SR650 uh, here, which you've seen me uh, repair in a previous video. And I've just got a low pass filter in here, 20 hertz. You don't need something fancy like this. You can just roll your own um, RC filter to do uh, something like this if you want. And of course, people are going to want to see probes with the symbols back on. So here we go. Let's uh, reset this puppy and here we go. There we go. It's counting individual claps now. No problems. And if you have a look at the scope waveform there, you can see we've got our noisy input uh, blue waveform down the bottom. I've just uh, moved them. They're the same volts uh, per division. And then the nice cleaned up output of the uh, filter there so that we can trigger off, in this case, the uh, negative going pulses just down in there, the negative edge inside there. So that works a treat. So I hope you enjoyed that uh, little look at just setting up a uh, test system to count probes the monkey here, how many times he claps, and lots of subtle little things actually go on in this, uh, in such a, a setup. You've got contact bounce issues, noise issues, uh, conducted motor, conducted and radiated motor emission shielding, all sorts of, you know, problems. You might think, hey, that's easy just to count the number of uh, claps, but yeah, you can come and guts it in many different ways. And yes, there are other ways to do this, of course. You can do it with a setup and micro and count pulses and all that sort of stuff. But uh, stick around for the next video where I'll show you how you can replace, or well, kind of, sorta, if there's not too much noise, replace all this wonderful setup by hacking a calculator. Check it out. The video will be here somewhere right at the very end of this video. 
And don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and all that sort of jazz because that really helps these days with the YouTube metrics and or ranking and all that sort of jazz. Catch you next time.